Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and today we're gonna to talk all about speaker coverages, dispersion, and uh, kinda of explain what all these terms mean and what they mean and how they matter for you. All right, so good speaker coverage is one of the most important aspects of setting up an audio system. Uh, there are a lot of complicated formulas and um, complex software we can use to make sure that we get a speaker to cover your space. Uh, but really, we can take a little bit more of uh, you know, some of that aspect out of it by learning a thing or two about uh, coverage and paying attention to what speakers we want to use for particular applications. One thing that's really important is that we want to try and maintain a consistent audio coverage throughout your spectator space. That means we want to try and have no more than six decibels or so of variation uh, in the sound pressure level um, from kind of the loudest to the quietest seat. That way we can kind of keep from having it be super loud in the front and quiet in the back. Um, one way that we can kind of do that is by, you know, paying attention to the different coverages for the different speakers. Um, there's two different axes um, on speakers that we need to kind of pay attention to. There's obviously the horizontal as well as the vertical. Different speakers kind of have different coverages to allow us to know how that speaker will perform, how wide it will cover, and also how high it will cover. The main consideration with horizontal coverage is we want to kind of keep in mind that we want to cover all of the audience from both sides with minimal overlap. The more and more that the speaker high frequency drivers, or the horns, the more that those um, overlap, the more likely we are to get hot spots, you know, areas that are louder than other areas, as well as what's called phasing. Phasing kind of can be thought about as um, interference or cancellation with sound waves. Places where two different speakers are aiming at the exact same location, where sound uh, waves basically interfere with one another, um, either by creating too much of one particular frequency or not enough of that frequency in that area. When taking into consideration horizontal coverage, sometimes it makes sense to think in terms of whether we actually need a stereo system or a mono system. When we say stereo, lots of people think that stereo is always going to sound better. You know, a stereo hi-fi system like it was marketed back in the old days. Stereo really means different information coming out of a left speaker and a right speaker. Um, in a stereo system, we're actually getting different information coming out of those two different speakers most of the time. Uh, some spaces actually can be covered by a single mono um, speaker or single, single mono array, which actually helps to prevent some of these horizontal um, coverage issues that I just described. So it's worth taking into consideration whether some spaces uh, may actually be better served by a mono system. Besides horizontal coverage, it's also important to take into consideration vertical coverage, how high the speaker pattern um, actually comes out and, and where we need to point it. Uh, this is kind of where the elevation, the height of the speaker comes in, as well as the speaker distance from the audience. Um, a large part of speaker coverage is finding a balance between where to put the speaker and how loud the speaker is going to be. We want to make sure, you know, and, and keep a speaker high up off the ground out of the way to where we can make sure that it'll throw to the back of a room, but also make sure that it still is covering everywhere we need. Um, a speaker does no good if it's all the way up on the ceiling pointed straight ahead, but all your audience listeners are down below. So we want a, a, a nice balance of pointing it directly at the people as much as possible. Sometimes it's also necessary to add what's called fill speakers, which are basically small speakers either at the back of the room, sometimes at the very front of the room in a theater or a church or an auditorium. Um, and these fill speakers basically help to cover some of the areas that the um, main speakers may not be able to reach easily. Every venue ultimately has some of its own specific coverage challenges, um, and we can always help to go over those together. You know, sometimes uh, a dance club with a really low ceiling is gonna have challenges making sure to get high uh, sound pressure levels all the way in the back, uh, but that's where um, a good system design that takes into consideration things like fill speakers and whatnot can really kind of come through to help uh, resolve your, uh, any issues you might come across in your space. As mentioned before, most loudspeakers have what's referred to as dispersion pattern um, that can be called things like dispersion on their uh, cut sheet uh, that refers to their waveguide. A waveguide is actually um, a portion of the speaker itself um, that sometimes is a horn um, that actually attaches to the high frequency driver and determines the coverage of the speaker itself, uh, primarily on the high frequency driver. How wide is it going to cover versus how um, high is it going to cover as well. Um, 
That generally is related to the actual physical size and shape of the speaker itself. Uh, sometimes bigger speakers are able to have a wide variety of different coverage angles. Um, and that kind of is displayed here in the speaker we have, the Yamaha C115 VA. Uh, it's a 15 inch um, woofer loudspeaker that has a 90 degree by 40 degree uh, CD horn. CD basically means constant directivity, which basically means that it's uh, a symmetrical coverage pattern. Um, it's, it's 90 degrees. So basically if you think of being on axis, straight on with the speaker, uh, it's 90 degrees wide. It's 45 this way, 45 this way. Uh, so you can basically know that it's going to be even on both sides, symmetrical. Um, there are some asymmetrical coverage pattern speakers out there, um, but those get a little bit more complicated, but definitely reach out to us if you think something like that might be applicable for you. Uh, these are really important coverages to take into consideration because like I mentioned, this one is a 90 by 40, which is pretty common in a lot of speakers. Also a 90 by 60, a little higher vertical pattern is also pretty common. Um, but what's really important to take into consideration here is that if you were to basically mount the speaker sideways for any reason, you take that same uh, dispersion and rotate it. So now it's no longer a 90 by 40, now it's a uh, 90 by 40. Uh, so some actual speakers also have rotatable waveguides as well, where you can actually rotate the horn inside. Um, it's particularly important to look at uh, dispersion when looking at stadium speakers um, from companies like Atlas and JBL and community loudspeakers that actually have things like 90 by 90 or 60 by 60 or even 50 by 20. Uh, the reason why that's important is those dispersions can actually um, impact how far the speaker will throw. Uh, something like a community R2-52Z is a 50 by 20. Uh, which means that you're getting a very narrow dispersion so we can throw all the way across a football field and still have it sound nice and rich and full. Dispersion also comes up quite a bit with ceiling speakers. Ceiling speakers are a little bit more unique in that rather than having um, a uh, horizontal and then a vertical pattern, they actually have what's called a conical or you know cone shape uh, dispersion. Normally in 100 degree, 130 degree, there's some that are as high as 180 degrees. But the idea is with a ceiling speaker, we don't want it to, you know, it's going to be pointed down. We don't want it to necessarily have a uh, vertical and horizontal pattern. We want it to have a nice even pattern to where it comes down as a, as a uh, cone shape. Uh, to where it's even regardless of whether you're standing in this spot of the speaker coverage or over here. We want to make sure you're still covered by that. So. Uh, once again, though, a wider um, dispersion coverage means a wider area that that speaker is going to cover. You've probably also heard the term line array come up quite a bit. Line arrays actually combine lots of individual speakers to create a, uh, a larger uh, dispersion pattern. Uh, this applies specifically with column arrays, you know, the tall, skinny arrays that have lots of individual speakers firing straight ahead. Most of those have incredibly wide dispersion angles, many times 100, 120 degree plus but very narrow vertical patterns. That also helps to allow us to point the speaker exactly where we want it. In a situation like a Catholic church or something like that that has lots of hard surfaces, we can actually point that uh, speaker directly where the audience is and keep from getting sound waves from bouncing around off the floor uh, or off of other hard surfaces. There's also line arrays that are called um, uh, variable dispersion, which actually is like the large concert speakers, sometimes called banana speakers that you see out there, with lots of individual boxes uh, hung from one another. They're variable in that you can actually adjust the dispersion of the individual speakers to uh, tailor the, uh, the sound of the system for your particular space. At the end of the day with these coverages, we always want to basically consult a professional at some point and make sure we're getting the right coverage angle for our space. And also, if you already have a system in place and you're trying to kind of fine tune it, you want to use your ears to determine, am I pointing my speakers at exactly the right location? Uh, does the space sound particularly noisy? Am I pointing it too much at the ground or too much at a wall? Um, or do I need to possibly rotate the speaker to change the um, acoustic properties and the dispersion angle? If you've got questions about everything we went over here today, if you're uh, wondering about the dispersion pattern of your speaker or what speakers might be ideal for your space, definitely reach out to us at www.proacousticsusa.com or give us a call, 888-256-4112. Uh, drop us a like, let us know if you're watching or if there's any topic that we can help you with, and we'd love to uh, help out. Thanks for watching again, guys, and on to the next one.